Hi everyone, my name is Brittany J. Jones and I am so excited to be stepping in for Mimi G. She is currently traveling on business and asked me to record the sew alongs for her new Summer Simplicity Patterns 8890 as well as 8889. In this video today, we're going to be sewing View A of Simplicity 8890 and I hope to bring you that same style of Mimi G recording that we all know and love. So let's get started. Before we begin sewing, I want to go over the pattern pieces that we will need to cut out to make the jacket on this pattern, Simplicity 8890. If you're wondering the types of fabrics that would work great for it on the back of the envelope, there's a list of suggested fabrics as well as the notions and the yardage that you need to purchase to make it. We need to cut pattern piece number one. This is our front and we need to cut two of these. Pattern piece number two, this is the back. We need to cut one on the fold. Pattern piece number three, this is the flap front. We need to cut two of fabric and two of lining. Pattern piece number four, this is the flap back. We need to cut one on the fold of fabric and one on the fold of lining. Pattern piece number five, this is the sleeve front. We need to cut two. Pattern piece number six, this is the sleeve back. We need to cut two. Pattern piece number seven, this is the carrier. We need to cut one. Pattern piece number eight, this is the tab. We need four of fabric and two of interfacing. Pattern piece number nine, this is the front facing. We need two of fabric and two of interfacing. Pattern piece number 10, this is the back facing. We need to cut one on the fold of fabric and one on the fold of interfacing. Pattern piece 11, this is the under collar. We need to cut one on the fold of fabric and one on the fold of interfacing. Pattern piece number 12 is the under collar. We need two of fabric and two of interfacing. And pattern piece number 13, this is the tie belt. We need to cut two. Once you have all the pattern pieces cut out as well as your fabric and you've transferred all of your markings, we can start sewing. To begin sewing, the first thing that we're going to do is apply stay stitching to piece one, piece two, three, four, five, and six. And stay stitching will be done on the upper edge of each of the pattern at a half an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do those now. Now that I have all the stay stitching done, I'm going to start working on piece one and two. So I'm going to sit the others to the side. And with right sides facing, we're going to stitch the front to back together at the side seams. So I'm going to grab my pins, find my notch, and pin in place. Once you have a pin, we can go ahead and sew in a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once we have the side seam sewn, we can go ahead and press it open. Because the jacket is unlined, you do want to consider how you're going to finish off your seams. Now, whether you use a zigzag stitch, a serger, picking shears, those are great options. You could also use some bias tape to finish off your seams by doing a Hong Kong finish or something as simple as just encasing your seam in between the bias tape. That's an option. You can also do a clean finish by folding in an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch pressing that down and then stitching right along the edge of the fold. I think I'm going to go with that option of just folding in an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch and just stitching right along that folded edge. So when I finish off my seams for this jacket, that is how I would do all of my seams. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and press in one eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch and go ahead and stitch that down to finish off my seam. Once we have finished off our side seams, we can go ahead and put our front and back to the side and grab our piece three and four, which are the front and back flaps, and we can sew those at the side seams, right sides facing. So I'm gonna grab my pins, line up the notches and pin in place. Once it's pinned, I can go ahead and stitch it in a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now that we have the front and back flap sewn, we can go ahead and press those side seams open. Now we can go ahead and grab our lining pieces. For the lining, we're going to put right sides facing. Pin at the notch. And stitch the side seam for the flap lining at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. I pressed my side seam open for my line, so now I can move on to the next step. The next step is for us to grab our flap pieces as well as the lining pieces and with right sides facing, we're going to go ahead and pin the lower edge of the flap piece together. So match up your notches as well as your side seams and let's go ahead and pin it together now. Once you have it all pinned, we can go ahead and stitch it at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you have the lower edge sewn, we can go ahead and trim it down. Now that I have it trimmed, I'm going to go ahead and understitch my lining. So I'm going to make sure that the seam allowance is toward the lining and I'm going to go ahead and do my understitching now. Now we can turn the lining to the inside and give it a good press. Once you have the lining turned to the inside and pressed, now we can go ahead and baste along all of the raw edges all the way along the top of the flap. Let's baste the lining to the fabric now. Okay, now that we have basted along the flap with the lining and fabric pieces, now we can go ahead and grab our front and backs and with right sides facing, or with the right side of the fabric facing the lining side of the flap, so we have a lining to the right side of the jacket, we're gonna go ahead and pin at our shoulder seams as well as our notches all the way around the upper edge. Now that we have it all pinned, and again, the lining of the flap is to the right side of the front and back of the jacket. So again, we have it all pinned, we can go ahead and base the raw edges together now. Now that we have the flap basted onto the front and back of the jacket, we can go ahead and set this to the side and begin to work on our sleeves. So with right sides facing, we're gonna stitch the sleeve at the shoulder seam. So I'm gonna grab my pins, find my notches, 
and pin the sleeve back to the sleeve front along the shoulder seam. Go ahead and pin the other sleeve the same way. Now that I have the sleeves pinned along the shoulder seam, we can go ahead and stitch it down at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Stitch your other sleeve the same way. I have my sleeve sewn, so now I'm going to go ahead and press it flat. Once I get up here around the shoulder area, you can see that there is a curve. So I'm going to use my ham to press that. Once you have your sleeve seam pressed, you want to go ahead and press the other sleeve seam open as well and then finish off your edges. These are seams that will be seen inside of your jacket, so make sure that you finish those off. Again, I'm just going to press over about an eighth of an inch, press it down, and stitch right along the fold. Once you have the shoulder seam finished on your sleeves, we can go ahead and put it to the side and start working on piece eight, which is our tabs. Okay, so we should have cut four tabs out of fabric and two out of interfacing. I've already fused two of mine with interfacing here. So now with right sides facing, I'm gonna go ahead and pin all the way along the tab. I'm gonna leave an opening here on this long edge so that we'll be able to turn it right side out. So this right here, I will leave open. I'm gonna go ahead and pin the rest. All right, so I have my tabs pinned together with right sides facing. We're gonna go ahead and stitch in a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way around the tab, but make sure that you leave an opening on one of the long sides so we'll be able to flip everything right side out. So let's go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and stitch your other flap the same way and don't forget to leave an opening on one of the long edges. Once you have the tabs sewn, go ahead and trim them. Go ahead and trim your other flap the same way and then turn it right side out and give it a good press. After you have your tabs turned right side out and pressed, we can go ahead and slip stitch our opening closed. So I have my needle and thread here and I'm just gonna start on the inside, slip stitching it closed. All right, so here are my tabs all done. After you have done your slip stitch, go ahead and top stitch all the way around your tab as well as put on your buttonhole. So now we can go ahead and grab our sleeves. And on the outside, you should have transferred some markings. I see my markings here on the inside. I'll grab some pins so I can poke through here and I can see exactly where I'm lining it up at. I'm taking the straight edge of the tab and I'm lining it up right here and I'm gonna pin it down. Now we can take it to the machine and we can stitch right across the straight edge of the tab right along that broken line. Once we have the tabs stitched across the sleeve, we can go ahead and sit the sleeves to the side for just a moment and grab our carrier P7. Okay, so this is my carrier P7. I'm gonna fold it with wrong sides together and go ahead and press it in half lengthwise. And I'm gonna fold the raw edges to the crease. Now that the raw edges are pressed toward the crease, we can go ahead and fold it in half and press it again. Now we can take it to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch close on both of the long edges. So let's go ahead and do that now.
now that we have the carrier piece sewn, we're gonna go ahead and cut it into four pieces that measure two and three fourths of an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut mine now. This extra piece that we have, we're just gonna fold this and cut it in half. And we will sit this to the side and use it later. Okay, for the carriers, we're gonna go ahead and grab our sleeve piece. And on the outside of the sleeve, we're going to press in 3 8 of an inch on both ends of the carriers. And then I'm gonna take this carrier, I'm gonna place it on here, take it to the machine and stitch right along the ends of the carrier. For the one that we're gonna put along the top, it's gonna to go right over the straight edge of the tab. And we're gonna do the same thing, pin it right over it and then stitch along the edges of the tab. So let's go ahead and do that now. Once you have the carriers sewn on, you can go ahead and slip the tab through. And then we can go ahead and sew on our button right up under our buttonhole. I'm gonna hold off on sewing on mine until the end when I sew on the other buttons. Our next step is to go ahead and stitch our underarm seam. So with right size facing, I'm gonna find my notches and pin my sleeve. Once you have it pinned, we can go ahead and sew the underarm seam in a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, press our seam open, and then finish off your seams. So I have my sleeve seam sewn, I've pressed it open flat, and I've also finished off the edges the same way I've been doing for the other seams. The next step is to go ahead and press up the hem, and the hem allowance is 2 inches. So I have my seam gauge here. I'm gonna go ahead and press up two inches. Once you have the two inches for the hem allowance pressed up, then you wanna fold in a quarter of an inch along that raw edge and press that down as well. Once you have your hem pressed up and you've pressed in a quarter of an inch on that raw edge, we can go ahead and take it to the machine and we can stitch close to this inner pressed edge. I'm gonna make sure that I have the right side of my fabric facing up while I'm stitching and I'm just gonna use my finger as a guide to make sure I stay close to the pressed edge. So let's go ahead and stitch our hem in place now. Here's the inside of my sleeve seam. Now I can go ahead and take it to the ironing board and give it a good press. Now that the sleeves are sewn, I've also pressed the hem. We can go ahead and install the sleeves into our jacket. So with right sides facing, make sure that you have the right sleeve for the right side. So the single notch goes to the front, the double notch goes to the back. Match up your side seams, pin in place, match up your notches, and then continue pinning your sleeve. Once you have it all pinned, we can stitch it at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, and then you wanna stitch it again at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. And down here between your two notches, you want to trim the seam close to the stitching. So let's go ahead and sew our sleeve in now. Once you have the seam sewn, I'm gonna go ahead and trim close to the stitching down here between the notches. Okay, now that it's trimmed, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off these seams because these are seams that will be seen inside of your jacket. And I'm just gonna use some bias tape to finish these off, my shoulder seams. So I have this strip right here and I'm just going to encase my seams in here. I am gonna trim this down a little bit and I'm just going to put my seam allowance inside the bias tape, fold it over and stitch really close to the folded edge of the bias tape. So that's how I'm gonna finish off these shoulder seams here.
Alright, so here are my shoulder seams. I have finished them off with the bias tape. Now we can move on to working on our collar. So here's piece 11. This is our upper collar. You should have cut out one of fabric and interfacing. I've already fused my interfacing. And you should have cut out two under collar, which is piece 12, as well as two pieces of interfacing, and I've already fused those as well. First step that we're going to do is with right sides facing, we're going to put our under collar together, which is piece 12. Match up the notches on the side, pin in place. Take it to the machine and stitch at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Let's go ahead and press this seam open. Now that we have the under collar sewn, we're going to go ahead and put it right sides facing with the upper collar. You should have transferred some double notches along the bottom edge of it. I'm going to find those notches and pin there. And then continue pinning all the way around, but we're going to leave this single notched edge open. Now that we have it pinned, we can go ahead and stitch around the collar, being sure to leave the single notch edge open. Now that it's sewn, we can go ahead and trim it and clip our curves. Now that we have it trimmed, we can go ahead and understitch the under collar. So you want to make sure that you have your seam allowance facing toward the under collar. Now we can go ahead and do our understitching now. Now we can turn our collar to the right side and give it a good press. Now that we have the collar turned to the right side and pressed, we can go ahead and baste the raw edges together now. Now that we have the collar basted, we want to go ahead and get our jacket and match up our notches, as well as put the small circles at the shoulder seams. If you need to clip the neck edge so that it can give a little bit, you can snip down to the stay stitching, but don't go past the stay stitching with your snip. So I'm going to start right here, matching up my notches and pin in place. Once you have the collar pinned on, making sure that you've matched up your small circles as well as your notches, we can go ahead and baste it down. Now that we have the collar basted on, we can go ahead and put the jacket to the side for just a moment and start working on our facing pieces. For our facing pieces, this is piece 9 and this is 10. I've already applied interfacing to both. So I'm going to put them right sides facing, match up my notches, and pin in place. Now I'm going to take it to the machine and stitch in a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you have your facing pieces sewn together, you want to go ahead and give them a good press. And then we're going to finish off the long unnotched edge all the way around the facing. So whether you're doing your bias tape, your serger, or if you're going to fold in a quarter of an inch, go ahead and finish off the long edges of your facing now. Once we have the facing edge finished and I just folded in a quarter of an inch on mine and stitched it down, we can go ahead and grab our garment and with right sides facing, we're going to match up our notches and our markings and pin the facing all the way around. Okay. 
Now that you have the facing pin, we can go ahead and take it to the machine. We're gonna stitch at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way around. On this lower edge, however, we're going to stitch at an inch and a half coming across here. So again, this is gonna be stitched up here at an inch and a half. The front and neck edge will be at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do that now. Once you have the facing sewn on, now we can go ahead and trim it down. Down here along the bottom, I'm going to clip up here, but then trim all of this off. So the bottom hem edge should look like this. Same thing for the other side. Now we can go ahead and trim the rest of the facing and also clip into our curves. Once you have trimmed your seams and clipped into the curves, you can go ahead and turn your facing toward the inside and give it a really good press. Once we have the facing press, we want to go ahead and edge finish our hem. So if you're going to fold in a quarter of an inch along the top of it, you can go ahead and do that and stitch it down. Or you can encase bias tape, do a Hong Kong finish, serger edge. Go ahead and finish off the hem edge and then we can press it up. So you can see here that I finished off the edge of my hem. I've also gone ahead and pressed up an inch and a half. That is the hem allowance for the hem. So I've pressed that up. And now we can go ahead and slip stitch the hem in place. I have my needle and thread here. We're also going to slip stitch the spacing to the hem. So let's go ahead and do our slip stitching now. Once you have slip stitched your hem in place, before you put away your needle and thread, we're gonna tack down the facing to the shoulder seams right here just so they're not moving around in the garment. So again, get the needle and thread. And we're just gonna put a couple tacks here to hold down the facing to the shoulder seam. Once we have the facing tacked down, we can go ahead and move to the next step. Now we can go ahead and move on to doing the carriers for the side of the jacket. We saved one of the belt loop pieces and cut it in half. So now we're gonna fold up 3 8 of an inch on the edge of these and find our markings to sew these to the side of the jacket. All right, on the outside of the jacket, I've transferred my markings for my carriers. So again, I'm just gonna fold in 3 8 of an inch on the edge of those, match them up with the markings, then I'm gonna take it to the machine. I'm gonna stitch right along the folded edge of the carriers. I'm gonna do that for both sides. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that we have our side carriers sewn on, before we do our buttons and buttonholes, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on my tie. So we have a notched edge on one of our ties. We're gonna go ahead and pin there and stitch in a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now we can go ahead and press the seam open flat. Once it's pressed, we can go ahead and fold the tie right sides facing We're gonna leave an opening here in the center so we'll be able to turn it right side out and continue pinning. 
Now we can go ahead and stitch the tie in a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Being sure to leave an opening in the back to turn it right side out. I have my tie sewn. I left an opening in the back so I can flip it right side out. Now I'm going to go ahead and give it a good trim and a press. Turn it to the right side and we'll move on to the next step. Now that I have my tie sewn, I flipped it right side out. I'm going to go ahead and give it a really good press. And then I'm going to grab my needle and thread again and slip stitch this opening closed. So first I'm going to go ahead and press my tie out. Now that I have the opening on the back of the tie slip stitch closed, I'm going to go ahead and top stitch along all the edges of the tie now. Now that I have my tie top stitch all the way around, I'm going to put that to the side. I'm going to go ahead and make my buttonholes. I have a buttonhole marking up here at the top as well as down here toward the bottom of the jacket. So I'm going to go ahead and make my buttonholes now. Go ahead and sew my other buttonhole the same way. So I have my buttonholes sewn onto the jacket. I've also put my little tie on it. The last thing for us to do is to go ahead and add our buttons to the tabs as well as to the front of the jacket and we'll be all done. Well that's all for the sew along. I really do hope that you all enjoyed it. Until next time, blessings everyone. Bye!